Hi, this is Tim Erden, author of Statistics in Plain English, and in this video I am going to demonstrate how to um, conduct a reliability analysis. And um, this is based on um, the results that we got from the factor analysis, which are in the factor analysis video. So um, you might want to take a look at that. It's not critical that you've seen that before you see this, but um, it can provide some context to better understand this. Um, <clears throat> to conduct a reliability analysis, you go to Analyze in SPSS, and um, um, go to the Scale item, or the Scale option, and then Reliability Analysis. And when you do, it will bring up this window where you select the variables that you want to put into the analysis. Um, let's see, I picked one by mistake. Let me get rid of that one. And in the factor analysis that I did, I found that the three performance avoidance items, these are these three here, and performance avoidance, again, is about not wanting to look dumb, um, not wanting to do worse than others, uh, not wanting to appear incompetent or unable. So um, these are survey items that I gave to high school students. And in the factor analysis, these three performance avoidance items all created, uh, loaded together on one factor. And um, then, um, but there was one performance approach item and a performance approach is wanting to do better than others. There's one performance approach item that loaded on the um, avoidance scale. This is what the factor matrix looked like. And you can see the three um, avoidance goal items all loaded together on one factor. And then there was this one performance approach item about it's important to me that I look smarter than others that loaded on this avoidance goal factor. And it also cross loaded on this performance goal factor. So I am putting it into this reliability analysis to see how well it, how well these four items hold together. And when you run a reliability analysis, um, you can choose different statistics to look at, um, like descriptive statistics for the items that are included, uh, the scale, what would the scale be if the item were, if an item were deleted. Um, you can look at correlations, among the items, and um, you can look at some summaries, some means, some correlations. Let's do that, and then let's take a look and see what we get. <clears throat> okay, so the case processing summary tells us that we had 865 um, um, students in the sample, and our Cronbach's alpha. Here is 0.792. That's pretty strong. Usually, um, any Cronbach's alpha that's over 0.7 is generally considered to have acceptable reliability to be a pretty reliable scale. Um, and so, 0.92 is definitely uh, acceptable. These are the means and standard deviations and sample sizes for each of the items that were included in the analysis. This is the correlation matrix. You can see that the numbers below the diagonal are the same as the numbers above the diagonal. So there's just repeated information. So just focus here. And this is a way to sort of quickly glance and see, well, how well, how strongly are these items correlated with each other? And they're all in the 0.4 to 0.6 range. Um, so those are pretty, pretty good correlations. Um, it's interesting that this one performance approach item is pretty strongly correlated with the three performance avoidance items. Um, it holds, holds together pretty well. Uh, you can see that the three avoidance items, this one, this one, and this one, are a little more strongly correlated with each other than they are with the um, performance approach item, but not, not overly so. Um, some summary statistics, um, these are sort of averages. The average inner item correlation is 0.490, so that's telling you the average correlation among the items is 
um, about 0.49, which we could tell just by looking at the correlations. Okay, let's take a look at this one. <clears throat> um, the scale mean, if the item were deleted, we don't really care about that so much. Uh, what we care about is what would the alpha level, what would the Cronbach's alpha be if the item were deleted? And as you can see, um, it would be the highest if this performance approach item were deleted. But even if you deleted that performance approach item, you wouldn't get a higher alpha than you have with it. Um, it would actually make the alpha go down from 0.792 to 0.772. So although this performance approach item was not designed to go with these um, performance avoidance goals, uh, statistically it seems to. It seems that students were answering all of these items um, in pretty highly correlated ways. So this would be a situation where the researcher would have to make a decision. Statistically, these this performance approach item goes with these three performance avoidance items. The approach and the avoidance go together statistically. Uh, conceptually, they're not supposed to go together, so it's not clear whether um, it is a good idea to include this. But if you look at the way the questions are worded, it makes sense that they go together because they're all about um, appearing able or how one appears how in terms of their ability. So that is how you run and interpret uh, reliability analysis using SPSS. And I hope that that's helpful.